after the disaster that was week one, it is now time to talk about week two for the Chicago Bears. What is going on, y'all? Five Sports Talk back at it with another video talking. Of course, man, NFL. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure to go ahead and subscribe by hitting the big red subscribe button down below. And make sure while you're at it to turn on my post notifications to be notified every time I post a new video. And I do so a lot. NFL season full swing. You don't want to miss out. And while you're at it, make sure to follow me on my social media. Links down below and on the screen as well. So, giving you guys my preview for the Bears Week 2 game against the Denver Broncos. So, I will be doing previews and recaps for every single Bears game. So, like I mentioned, you don't want to miss out. So we all know what happened in week one against the Green Bay Packers. I've addressed it. I made a video about it. And I don't want to talk about it anymore, honestly, because it is just sad when I think about what transpired in that game. It just left a bad taste in every single Bears fan's mouth. And you just never want something like that to happen again. So it's time to move on. You only get 16 of these games, so now only 15 for the Bears. And again, it's only one week. So let's talk about week two against the Denver Broncos. So let's get started with a couple quick housekeeping items. The Bears visit the Denver Broncos in week two. They are favored in this game by two and a half. Uh, I believe it was one and a half it opened up in, and it got bet more surprisingly after that performance the Bears put up last week. So again, the Bears lost 10-3 to to the Green Bay Packers in Week 1. The Broncos also lost their Week 1 matchup, surprisingly, to the Oakland Raiders 24-16. to So both teams are 0-1 heading into Week 2, and somebody will, of course, come out 1-1 after Week 2. And the over-under is about 40. Uh, I might take the under on that. I will get to that shortly. And now let's talk about the analysis itself, okay? So... Let's address the elephant in the room, folks. The Denver Broncos just lost to the Oakland Raiders. Now, no disrespect to the Raiders. They are a nice team, and I was happy for them to get the victory. But they are obviously not a contender, and the Broncos lost to them now just one week. But we all know that the Broncos are not very good, which means the Bears should win this game. And Vegas also said they should win this game. They're favored, okay? Even though they are on the road, you got Denver, the whole altitude thing, fine, okay? But here's the thing. After that performance against the Packers, the Bears need to come out and make a statement. They don't need to just win. They need to win convincingly and fix the mistakes that they made against the Green Bay Packers. I'm telling you right now, that game one was such a letdown for Bears fans that I've talked to a few, and again, overreaction tends to happen for sure, but it just feels like a bad sign, and a lot of people are already giving up hope. Again, week one, I'm not one of them, okay? I Like I said, it's a long season, but you just got to come out and kind of just give everybody that hope, okay? That's it. Just give everybody the hope that everything will be all right. And there was a lot of blaming that, uh, you know, went around after week one. I completely went up and tore apart Matt Nagy and even Mitchell Trubisky and the Bears offense because, of course, the defense played phenomenal. They did their job. Uh, they held the Packers to 10 points. That's all you can ask. But in terms of the offense... It was an absolute joke, okay? So the offense needs to come out and prove itself. And that's what I'm going to be focused on with my keys here, okay, folks? We're only talking about the offense because the defense, you guys did your job in week one, and we don't need to change anything with the defense. If anything, we just need the defense to continue playing how they did in week one. So let's start with a couple of the keys heading into this matchup with the Denver Broncos. Let's start with, of course, key number one, and I cannot emphasize this enough. Please, please, please run the damn football, Chicago Bears. Run the damn football, Matt Nagy. Okay, let me give you some quick numbers in week one. Mitch Trubisky threw the ball 45 times, okay? We ran the ball 15 times, okay? 15 uh, David Montgomery, our rookie sensation running back, who every time he touched the ball, good things happened, and he was able to make things happen, got six carries. Six. That's it. Six carries for David Montgomery. 
And you just saw the rookie running back for the Oakland Raiders, Josh Jacobs, go 23 carries for 85 yards and two touchdowns. Okay? I'll take David Montgomery over Josh Jacobs. Okay? The Raiders just showed you that you could run on the Broncos. We need to do the same. Not just because of what the Raiders showed. Excuse me. The Yeah, the Raiders showed you. But because of the fact that the Bears cannot have Mitchell Trubisky throwing the ball 45 times a game, okay? This is not even about Mitch and the struggles. You just don't want to have any quarterback outside of like a top five quarterback. I don't even know if, if the Packers want Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball 45 times a game. It's just not a good formula, okay? You want to kind of keep him around 30, around there. That's a good number. But please run the football, please. And give it to David Montgomery more so than the other guys. When I say run the football, don't run it. With Mike Davis, uh, you know, for for twenty carries, uh, and or Tariq Cohen for twenty carries. I want David Montgomery to get the rock. We need to run the football. It will open up the offense. It will put less pressure on Mitchell Trubisky, and it will wear down this game against the Denver Broncos defense, who the Raiders showed you can run on. Let's move on to key number two for the Chicago Bears: get the ball out quick again. If you are a smart team in the NFL, then you learn from what other teams have done. And the Raiders just showed you how to beat the Denver Broncos. We literally just got a scouting uh, tape on the Denver Broncos. And the pass rush for the Denver Broncos, which is the best part of their defense, outside of, of course, Chris Harris, uh, on the back end, is something that was relegated to not being as effective. Because why? Derek Carr had a pretty good game. Because he got the ball out quick. And they talked about that after the game. Von Miller was asked about why he wasn't able to get to the quarterbacks. At, to the quarterback. And he mentioned that they got the ball out quick. And that is what the Bears need to do. They need to get the ball out quick. Out of Mitchell Trubisky's hands. Not to mention the fact that I don't want him throwing 45 times. But I also don't want him throwing the ball on, you know, uh, uh, seven step drops here either. Okay. I need the ball to come out quick. Boom, boom. Get the guys open. Can we throw some slants to Anthony Miller? He didn't get a damn catch in week one. That should never happen again all year long. Uh, Allen Robinson, keep feeding him. But please, get the ball out quicker to make sure you can negate the pass rush for the Denver Broncos. And finally, key number three. It's a little obvious, but Matt Nagy plus Mitch. Okay, I'm looking at both of these guys because Matt Nagy, I'm looking at the play calling. I don't want any more... Cordell Patterson runs on third and one. I don't want any more, uh, you know, we're going for it on fourth and 10 when we could take a field goal. I don't want any of these dumb play calls against the Denver Broncos. Go in, run the football, get the ball out quick, be effective, and get a good game plan in. Mitchell Trubisky, same thing. Don't want him to throw in the double coverage. Can't have that happening. Don't make mistakes. Hit the guys open. Go through your reads. If the first, you know, read is not there, Go through the progressions, Mitch, and make sure you can, you know, see the field and don't just lock in on Allen Robinson because that is what he did. I have Allen Robinson in a lot of leagues. I could say I want Mitchell Trubisky to lock in A-Rob because of, of the fact that I have A-Rob, but I'm not going to say that, okay? Mitchell Trubisky needs to spread the ball around and go through his reads and make sure that he does not make those mistakes that he made against the Green Bay Packers. But again, I put the majority of the blame uh, of week one again on Matt Nagy, and I need his play calling to be better. It just needs to be better, okay? So those are the keys for the Bears against the Denver Broncos in week two. And for me, a final score prediction. I have a fairly low scoring, folks. I wanted to go higher scoring, but I think I'm going to go 17 to 7. I wanted to go 21 to 7 um, because you take a look at the fact the Broncos only put up 16 points against the Raiders defense, Bears defense, top two, top three defense in the NFL. They should be able to easily contain Joe Flacco and coming. They don't scare me at all. So that's why I don't have the Broncos putting up points. But on the other end, I'm not willing to say the Bears, you know, come out and it's air raid show here. I think we are able to put up points. But I'm going to stay a little conservative and say 17-7, to 7, the Bears win week two at Denver. So let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below if you agree or disagree. Let me know your scoring predictions, the Bears winner or lose in week two against Broncos. Leave a comment down below as always. Thanks for watching.